We founded Food and Water Watch to jumpstart a movement focused on the issues that are critical for our existence. No one can live without food or water. We began with one office and a staff of 12, but now we have 17 offices and 90 staff located across the nation. Since huge corporations have so much influence over policy and regulation, it's crucial to counter that by organizing regular people to hold their elected officials accountable. We organize at the state and local level so that individuals have a voice in the most important issues of our time. We're seeking to grow a movement that takes back our democracy and protects our most essential resources. And to get there, we need to organize large numbers of people across the country. That's why we commit so many resources to grassroots organizing. We help communities take back their municipal water supplies from corporate control. We work to pass bills to label genetically engineered foods, and we organize neighborhoods to end fracking near their schools. We're successful because we take a strong stance when it comes to the environment and human health. This means we also have a strong donor base. Because we're not afraid to take a strong position, we can take on issues that other groups avoid. Fracking, for example, is a divisive issue that involves going up against large corporations' interests. But at Food and Water Watch, we bring big changes that protect our communities, even if it starts out as an uphill battle. We combine our policy expertise and deep research with effective grassroots organizing. This way, we tackle big systemic problems and create winnable campaigns. But to win almost anything, we need large numbers of people to be involved. Our strong positions resonate with people. Fracking must be banned, genetically engineered food should be labeled, and water should be treated as a public resource, not a commodity. People are drawn to Food and Water Watch because we're taking these strong positions and because we're independent. We don't take corporate or government money. Food and Water Watch is tracking our short-term victories and our progress in building a movement. For example, we pressured the FDA to set stricter limits on the levels of arsenic in apple juice, and we helped pass legislation in Maryland banning it in chicken feed, making it the first state to implement such a ban. We've helped pass dozens of local measures against fracking in communities across the country. This year, more than a million actions have been taken through our website to hold elected officials and corporations accountable. Our member base is growing rapidly. We're tackling important life and death issues about the food and water we need to live, but we're also all about changing the dynamics of power. Sometimes people view our uncompromising positions as being too aggressive, but we think of it like negotiating to buy a car or a house. You don't start with the price you hope to pay. That's how we feel about changing public policy. You need an organization like ours that's not afraid to stand up and to say, fracking should be banned. It moves the needle and expands what can be achieved.
One of our first big campaigns was pressuring the largest coffee retailer in the world to stop using milk produced with artificial growth hormones. Because of the pressure from our activists, they made the change. We also raised greater awareness about the problems with bottled water. It's expensive, bad for consumers, and undermines trust in our public water systems. It also commodifies an essential basic resource. Most recently, we were the first national organization to advocate for an all-out ban on hydraulic fracturing. People know they can rely on Food and Water Watch to protect our basic resources in the public interest. Frankly, we're up against billions of dollars. Large corporations have the market power to dominate not only their industries, but politics too. They influence all of our most important institutions, from broadcast and print media to right-wing think tanks and corporate-sponsored academic research. This makes all of our work much more difficult, but much more important. We'd put even more organizers on the ground because it's really about the grassroots, about getting people involved in their communities. That's where these issues affect them the most and where their pressure is most effective. With additional resources, we can expand our field program to not only cover all 50 states, but to build a powerful network of activists, community by community, state by state. We would especially like to expand more in the South and in the populous states like Texas. We'd like to expand our work on fracking to Latin America and Africa. We get requests from around the world for organizing assistance, for materials and research related to fracking, but don't have the resources to provide it. We have an office in Brussels that's been very effective in working on fracking and genetic engineering, but we also get requests from Eastern Europe for assistance. So often, it's U.S. companies that activists in other countries are trying to find information about. And with more resources, we could be very helpful to them.